Hello, I'm Marcus Antebi, and welcome to Pod My Cast, a show for um, not talented people like myself to talk and rattle and find self importance. Um, actually, no, I'm here with Teresa Antebi, my extremely, extremely kind and loving wife, and today we're going to talk about relationships. Now, I want to start off by saying we're not experts. And um, I've done a lot of reading. I've been in therapy for many years of my life. I'm currently not in therapy. I want to make that clear. Hey, we've done so great. We've made it to three years. I know, but I just want to say I'm not an expert, and I don't think that I have all or any of the answers. I just think that I have a good way of articulating what's going on and what the journey's been like. And so um, what I'll start off for us is I'll say that one of the things that is completely unique in my relationship today with you is that we are extremely compatible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that compatibility is something I overlooked in my earlier years because of uh, sheer desperation. No, kidding. Um, I, I, I don't think you're the only one, though. I think a lot of people, they don't put that as a priority, that the compatibility is kind of, you know, number one. Well, I was I learned from very weak teachers. I actually yeah. remember that one of the therapists I was working with, with um, in my late 20s um, emphasized that compatibility was overrated, that every partner you picked was the right person for you where you were at the time. Well, I, there's truth to that, though. Well, you, do you it haven't seen my exes. <laughs> um, and what, what the goal was, was to work through all of the issues and some people had some very scientific names for what those issues were going to be and for me that proved very expensive and extremely <laughs> torturous and what i realized was that a good starting point is compatibility so in other words if i'm a vegan and you love steak every night if I was a saint and I was fully developed and extremely conscious, non-judgmental and perfect, which I'm none of those things, we could probably be very uh, compatible and we can coexist nicely. But for yeah, but me, in the long run, it just does not work out. Yeah. Well, uh, talk to me a little bit about your experiences with being with someone that you weren't compatible with. Just say the area of diet. Tell us a little bit about that. All right, so prior to you, I was in a nine-year relationship with the father of my children. You have to get specific here. I mean, you boy. just asked, talk to me about the <laughs> relationship. I need to name names or anything. <laughs> well, there was no one else prior to you. All right, so, well, I mean, <laughs> probably not going to listen to this podcast. Great guy, by the way. Very, very good father. Great guy, great human being. We're just talking about diet here. And we know, by the way, to his credit, how completely insane you and I with diet. So okay, who the hell is going to be compatible with that? With him, I was lucky because he didn't mind my crazy diet. And he just, I was able to drag him along to Pure Food and Wine because I live right next to Pure Food and Wine. It was an all raw food place and he was open to it. So you would have the food. And whenever he ate his kind of food, uh, it was like, what do normal people eat again? <laughs> Waffles and pancakes and that kind of stuff in the morning. I didn't know that kind of food, so I had no interest. It wouldn't even tempt me. I think I get more tempted with you because you just get so many delicious vegetables <laughs> that I am tempted. With him, I had no temptation to touch the food. <laughs> Has anyone ever heard of a problem with a wife <laughs> saying, I'm so tempted to bring home all these <laughs> glorious vegetables. I don't know. I, I just lose control. <laughs> So, okay, so in your relationship with others, see how I put that? With you know, but then there is there is a guilt, though, because, um, you know, people like to socialize, they like to go to restaurants, and that was never my thing, because I, when I would go to restaurants with, with our friends, it's like, there was two things on the menu for me to order if we went to a normal restaurant, not to a vegan restaurant, and I don't drink alcohol, so it was... You get the, the yeast and the broccoli. I get, I get a salad, which is the cheapest thing on the menu, and... That's it. And I, we have to split bills with people that are drinking five glasses of wine, eating steaks. And that kind of got, you know, got on my nerves after a while. You know, and I felt bad for him. I was like, gosh, I'm like taken away from this man's life. <laughs> well, I understand that. I thought it was much deeper. I, I, I was mistaken. I, well, I would say for me that where the compatibility thing would be a problem in the past was that I never felt that I had the support to grow and become 
more involved in my passion for eating clean and living clean. I felt like I always had to reach a limit because... See, that never stopped me having someone that wasn't as healthy because I just did my thing. And you know how I am. When I am committed to something, I'm committed. Nothing's going to stop me. No one's going to stop me. I just do it. That sounds like a narcissist to me. <laughs> um, no, I, I agree. I, I would say that that could be a problem too because you become isolated and alienated. And, and, and it was because... She said to me tonight... Sorry, honey. She said when we left the colonic place, she said, I'm in heaven. <laughs> I always wanted to go and get a colonic with my husband and get a juice. <laughs> we're actually that couple now. That's very attainable goals. Yes. I mean, it's really probably, we're the only two people in all of the world that have that similarity. Um, so, so, I'm sorry, say what you were going to... I forgot. <laughs> all right. Well, don't forget next time we're on the air, we're live. Um, well, I know what question could uh, bring back what we were actually talking about. I could imagine that living your life and not having somebody to talk about these things and enjoy yep. them with would I be couldn't grow limiting that way. to you. Yes, it was limiting. Yes, definitely. Okay. Yes. And um, definitely I see us uh, not, we're not competitive at all. I just definitely see that, that for me, like if I know that if you weren't in my life, I definitely would have slipped away from my yoga practice as I do because I get a little bored, and, you know. And you were slipping away from your food with your ex. Well, let's not mention names. <laughs> I didn't mention <clears throat> names, but I said X. Um, thank you. I was. Um, and I definitely feel that I'm on the right path, and I definitely feel supported, and I definitely feel encouragement, and I definitely feel that if I'm having a low point or weakness, I never really slip that far away from my goals. How does that, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I do, but I'm still trying to get you to go on a fast with me. <laughs> I know, you know, it's just that I would say for this right now, I have some extra stress in my life right now. and That will help you. It For me personally, it doesn't. It adds a little bit of stress okay. uh, because I'm hungry. I'm extremely active. And I think for me to do juice cleanses or even attempt a water fast again or just, you know, go back to the diet I have usually in the summer, I, I feel like I need to be more relaxed. And I just need I to not cause extra pressure for myself. I understand. You know, that's just me. Um, and I'm glad, I'm proud of you that you did that one day water fast with me. That was great. It was great. Um, I was crying the whole time. <laughs> so actually, the water fast wasn't a water fast. I was dripping water from my eyes into my mouth. <laughs> I was licking my cheeks to get some water. Um, okay, so we were talking about, was this segment about relationships? Relationships. We went off track again. So in, in terms of relationships now, well, it was related. The relationships was related to right the to, to diet and diet compatibility. And compatibility. That's right. Yeah. So, I I think that one of the things that I've learned, and this took me my whole life, is that if I start the day off with the notion that I am merely your slave, I am a subject in your kingdom. You are the queen. I am a welcomed jester. I am here to serve you. I feel if I have that attitude on a daily basis, I'm in a perfect state of mind to have a relationship with a female. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving you the look. <laughs> What's that? Is that a look I of, agree. Of course you do. <laughs> I sh think you should never fight back with a woman. <laughs> I realize it. If I think you're 100% wrong and you're being bitchy, the right thing to do, still agree. no, according to my rule book, <laughs> is to take off your shoes and socks and give you a foot massage. That's a, if that's we do a good that, start. We'll be together forever. That's a good start. I didn't know. That I've before. actually I asked. I thought I was supposed to get these women in line. I have actually asked really old couples, like super old school couples, what is the trick for staying together so long? And all the men agreed. Just listen to the woman. When you say couples, how many people would you do like a survey? You like about five. Corner, That's of, enough. Like old bank. school people. Hello, you got a second here, guys? You have a second here for for Greenpeace? So you asked a few people. I asked a few people. Yeah, I mean, it was good enough for me to be like, okay, they're making, they're all making the same point. All right. So what we're saying in short, basically, is if you're a man in a relationship with a woman, shut your mouth and do as you're told. Don't no, be a whip about it. It's not shut your mouth and do as you're told. It's just just don't fight back just because women like women are kind of catty and they they just get mean, especially when you fight back and then they get really bitchy and 
don't mess with them a week before their period when they're PMSing. Just don't start an argument. Wait, wait no, hold on a second. <laughs> I've been keeping a track in my journal of the days of the month, and I realized that there's one day only in a 30-day period where I'm allowed to mess with you. You're bulletproof. I could say almost anything, and you'll one say, day? that's it. It's one day a month. I can come to you. I can tell you anything I want. I can confess anything I want, and you'll be. It'll be like the sound of music. You'll be singing, smiling, honey. It's okay. I love you, and I accept come on, you. I get a little more credit than that. It's not just one day. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. You're taking the bait here, by the way. I mean, I will admit there. There's about like seven days prior to the cycle starting that you just don't want to mess with me and just keep it quiet. Well, the reason this this new philosophy of me of mine works is because. I, I'm absolutely in love with you. I adore you. I think you're a great woman. You have tremendous uh, uh, personality traits that are very admirable. I learned from you. I think you're a very strong person. I think that you're out for my best interest. And I'm an asshole. And so, you what's are the not point? an asshole. What is the point of me struggling and arguing over nonsense? I have the courage now to just not be right. And there's nothing to argue over. I want to make you comfortable. And I want you to feel safe Thank and you. uh you know after this is just not enough time in this world to have all these differences that we have and god knows between a man and a woman just that fact alone there's a thousand differences we can come up with mm-hmm. and i definitely think that if i take this approach you'll be more relaxed more calm and you know, I think that you'll be more receptive when I'm trying to help you or to be of service, as I will put it now. And this doesn't mean at all that I'm henpecked, as they say, <laughs> or whipped in any way. It just means that there's nothing really that we argue about that hurts me deeply. And there's nothing for me to defend anymore. It's really just me <clears throat> saying, this isn't important to me. Maybe it's more important to her. I let it go. Now, granted, I've only been doing this for four hours, so I'll let you know in the next episode. <laughs> we'll how be back in a month and see how it worked. <laughs> Not just by the next episode. No, this has actually been something that I've been thinking about and I've talked about with you a lot, um, which is that because we're compatible. I don't really see a range of differences. We're not in a power struggle with each other. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. I don't need to fix you. I don't need to do something to your character to make you love me. I get all those things. So really what I'm left with is whatever you're feeling, I try to be responsive to it and I want to make sure that you're comfortable and I don't think anything that you're asking for is terribly unreasonable. You know, um, and I think some of the things that you ask for, I think that in time you'll outgrow. I agree. Like she wants a Ferrari. She wants a red Ferrari. Did, do I, I never said that. that? I'm, just, I'm just teasing. <laughs> I, I want a red Ferrari. <laughs> of course you do. You're a man. <laughs> the, the question I want to ask you, Teresa, is, is there a part of you when you hear me say this that says to yourself that, wait a minute. I was thinking the same thing. I'm here to serve you. You're my king. Of I'm... course. Why did I marry you? Did you not, you don't remember my vows? <laughs> they were really long. I, I don't. I do remember. <laughs> I actually mean them, and I am committed to you. I she mean, it took to me. It took me. me to death. It took me. What? Well, I can't count me. How how many years do you count since birth? I'm 36 years old. That's kind of late to get married. I you can't held really off. Count for birth. No, I know, but I'm just saying. I was 36. 21. That's your starting point. 36 when we got married, you know, and I I take marriage very very seriously. It's a deep commitment that I'm a loyal person. You know that. Amazing. I'm loyal. I know. All right. Well, the uh, the other uh, tip I would give to a man in a relationship with a woman is if you choose to follow my instruction, which is to be extremely giving and surrendering, make sure you do it like a gladiator. Do not be a wimp. Do not whimper. (laughs) You can do it like a man. Actually, I want to say, I was thinking about this the other day. A man pushing a baby stroller with dignity takes more courage and more dignity than a man wielding a sword or a gun. The other one is much harder because you look kind of helpless when you're changing a baby diaper in public or when you're trying to nurture a child. 
but it's actually a really but nowadays men are really good at that it's like the yeah, tables have turned it's not, it, when i was growing up it, it didn't look cool when you, you know were growing saying? up but now it's like you see daddies walking around with strollers changing diapers just stay-at-home dads now i mean it's it's so have changed <laughs> how do you feel about adoption are you serious yeah Babe, we already have four children. I mean, and you know how uh, expensive it is. If anybody's wondering how we, we acquired four children being married a year and a half, it's because I came in tow with two children and she came in tow with two children. It's, uh, we're the uh, the two-thirds Bra- Bra- Brady Bunch, the smaller episode, but we definitely have a Brady Bunch uh, of sorts. How old are your children? Eight and four. You have a male and a female? I have a little boy and a little girl, yes, male and female. Wonderful, beautiful children. I'll tell you, I have two girls. They're also wonderful, beautiful children. Her boy, <laughs> he is a ball of energy, that child. <laughs> and he's, he's, he's such a funny combination of personality He's traits. drinking too much juice. <laughs> well, too much he wakes Dr. up Green ready juice. to go, and he, you got to put him down. It's like you need elephant tranquilizers to get him down. He loves to cuddle you. He loves to make out with you. He loves to jiggle your boobies and slap your behind. And uh, he just loves his mommy. He's obsessed. He's obsessed. I'm, I can't remember I'm, that stuff. I don't I'm remember any of that stuff. I'm his first love until a girlfriend comes in the well, picture. I mean, I'm his first love. I didn't have this kind of childhood. The kid's four years old since he's a baby. He gets beautiful warm showers at nighttime. He gets massages. She massages him with down with coconut oil. And essential oils. I mean, he lies there like <laughs> he's the king of Thailand when he's getting his butt massaged. Um, I don't feel jealous, by the way. Um, I just want to put my foot down here and say that when he hits age six, that has to stop. It's not going to be... I can't give him massages anymore? Well, I mean, we could call a professional and on the show. It just I think there's definitely an age where it gets a little... Zarya is eight and I give him massages. A little different. <laughs> a little different. I mean, this is definitely going to be a family show, and we're not going to talk about body parts. But if you're giving your child a butt massage, and let's just it's say not just something a butt gets massage, swollen, you have to stop. It's a foot massage. It's it's it helps them relax and I know, calm I down. I never in had the that. Evening. I'm jealous. <laughs> I didn't have that. My my parents were I mean, screaming at each other. I mean, you see how hyped up he is. He needs to calm down and have his essential oils, and to get him ready for bed, he needs a massage. Yeah, yeah. he puts on his little uh, velvet. Uh, you Hefner Playboy jacket at, <laughs> at 8 p.m. He goes into the study. He reads a book, has a pipe, has a little nightcap, a little cognac, and he goes to bed. He's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I really think it's great sitting here and talking with you. I think that if we continue to do this, we should have a format, and I think we should literally unfold our entire personal life on a podcast, on a YouTube show, and uh, let's see what becomes of it. How do you feel about that? I like the idea. I mean, I'm not so professional at this. This is my first podcast show, but I'm comfortable. You're doing good. I think making eye contact is important. Um, I definitely think with me, you're going to have to butt in because I interrupt and I talk too much. But I think you have a soft, sweet voice, and you're definitely pleasing to look at more so than me. <laughs> and so with those qualities and advantages, I think... Um, Plus the fact is you have very good things to say. I help you to extract them. Like, do you think that you would ever get as personal as the questions I ask you unless I ask those questions? No. Does it make you uncomfortable? No, you're my husband. <laughs> well, I'm your husband, but whoever's listening to us is not your I don't husband. see the listeners. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been a great episode. And um, please, if you like what we have to say, give us some love, like the show, Follow us. Give us some encouragement. If you dislike the show, tell us what you think. We, we're, we're, we're really interested in learning. Thanks a lot. And uh, shout out to our producer and engineer, Brian McKay. The famous Brian McKay is back over there. He's been doing this with me now about a dozen times, so he's used to this shtick. Brian, do you have anything you want to say? No, I'm good. Okay. Well, you're a part of the show. You're listening to this. I sure am. Okay, and you know where I'm coming from, and now you get to see my other half. She's way prettier. Can the audience <laughs> get a quick look at you so they know we're talking to somebody? Oh, me? Hold on. Yeah. We weren't ready for this, but uh, no. Brian, good-looking guy, good guy, he's smart cute. guy. He's got a deep, great radio voice, very talented, and he's been extremely helpful. 
and I want to continue on with this relationship with uh, everyone in the room. Thank you. Thank you for having me.